This is the process shot. I'm Michael. I'm honestly a bit shaken up. And it's to do with Belladonna of Sadness, a Japanese animated film from Eiichi Yamamoto, released in 1973. Set in a feudal society in medieval France, the story follows Jeanne, a poor woman whose marriage to another villager is followed almost immediately by her assault at the hands of the feudal lord. Traumatized and despondent, she ends up making a deal with the devil to take revenge and acquire power. But as her position within the village rises, so does the danger that she faces. And so her deal further increases until Jeanne has no choice but to give the devil all that she has, body and soul. The movie is, again, animated, but its animation and art style is far from traditional, tossing out full motion in favor of a style primarily composed of still images, rendered in beautiful watercolors, and using the animated medium to its most expressive potential. There is a good amount of actual animation, but its usage is generally limited, usually to emphasize a certain tone or action. An early example of this would be Jean's first interaction with the devil, who appears to her as a small animated sprite while she remains completely still throughout their conversation. Later scenes do incorporate more motion, though they end up more as short loops rather than anything more intricate. Still, the film's overall art style is hypnotizing, and any such shortcomings don't significantly harm the end result, and instead add to the overall aesthetic. Plus, it's a very unique and distinctive style that stands out from whatever preconceived notions of Japanese animation you may already have. The story of Belladonna of Sadness is also captivating, and Jean's tragic story is worth seeing through to the end. It is paced a bit slow, but not so much that momentum is killed entirely. It's more of a moody sort of pacing, letting events and emotions sink in before ramping things up much further. And much within the story ramps up over time, not least of all the film's themes of sexuality and independence, framed primarily through Jean as she goes from someone caught in a helpless and desperate state to a fully realized person beyond anything anyone in her village could have imagined. Along the way, she reclaims her sexuality, choosing to embrace it and spread the love in a sort of ode to free love, exemplified in a later scene which I probably can't talk about in detail without getting in trouble on YouTube. However, contemporary imagery and ideas do permeate the film, including a particularly psychedelic montage that throws out any notion of keeping the film a medieval period piece. Another element along these lines is the film's soundtrack, which uses a lot more jazzy and modern sounds than you'd might expect from a film set in this time. Overall, Belladonna of Sadness is a more timeless story than it initially lets on. On its surface, a tragedy of a woman who falls from grace only to rise back up at the cost of what she holds dear, but with an underlying subtext of that woman reclaiming what had been taken from her, and being able to stake her own path, despite the rumors and reputation that doing so brings to her. It's made clear that what John does is not a danger to herself and others, but to those in power. And what begins as a story of a deal with the devil becomes a story of rebellion, independence, and triumph. Belladonna of Sadness 
Eiichi Yamamoto, 1973. Four and a half stars. I definitely recommend seeing this when you can. That's it for now. If you like this review, hit the like button. If you like this movie, hit the comment button. If you want to see more reviews, then subscribe to the channel. In the meantime, I gotta remember to get this on Blu-ray or something if I ever get out of here. <laughs>